Oh, that I pass terrible. Like, it's not for you. What, what, what does your opinion matter if it's not for you? You too. This is the brand new iPad 10th generation. This is possibly the best budget cheap iPad that you could purchase. Although it's been stirring up a bit of controversy in the tech community, but you guys know how I do it from the perspective and realistic mindset of the consumer. So here we have it. The iPad now has a redesign. I'm actually excited about this redesign. Finally, every iPad is in unison from a design standpoint. I like this rectangular flat edge design. It's in line with the iPhones and its bigger brothers, the iPad Air, iPad Pro, and iPad Mini, which we're gonna discuss in this video briefly too as a comparison. But let's take a look at this nice blue 10th gen iPad. Woo! Oh, that's a nice blue. It's actually a really very saturated Beautiful blue. It's not like, you know, this is the 13 Pro Max, that Sierra blue. Nah, it's blue blue. Um, I also have the folio case, the blue folio case, to pair with this coming in as well. So I'll show you guys some B-roll of that once it gets here. Just waiting on the UPS, man. Y'all know how that go. But here you have it. The new flat edge designed budget iPad. This is the cheapest iPad in the new design <laughs> available. Now, you can still currently purchase the ninth generation iPad for $329. This one retails at 449 bucks for a 64 gigabyte variant, which that is what this is. More on that later. Now, I'll be honest, you guys know I've always said that 64 gigabytes on any tech product should be illegal yet it still lives. Now I'm gonna give a perspective also as to why 64 gigabytes in this iPad could be ideal for me. I know, I, I, but wait, just wait, wait, relax. Let's discuss it. Now, one of the really cool things about this new iPad is the face cam placement. Boom, there it is. This new landscape mode webcam ideal face cam zoom camera is here but it came at a price because typically in this area is where you would have support for your apple pencil 2 which this does not have so this right here is the apple pencil 2 my favorite apple pencil i've never used the apple pencil 1 and i would never use it because i don't like how it's set up it was ah. We're not even gonna talk about the design of that, but being able to put your Apple Pencil there at a convenience and have it charge is so ideal, I love it. And the Apple Pencil 2 is available on the iPad Pro, the iPad Air M1, the iPad Air non-M1, and the iPad Mini can also do this. So why not the iPad? I think Apple chose to give the face cam placement, which is right here, over the Apple Pencil 2 support. Also, here's the reality. If you want Apple Pencil 2 support, and there's some other features that come with that that people are complaining about, get an iPad Air. I think that's the just. Another thing that came along with this brand new iPad 10th Gen is a specific magic folio case that is specific to this iPad. And you will not see me purchase or review that. You, the, everyone else has, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. This is a basic iPad at basic price, and why would I want to spend $300 on an accessory, which would bring the total of this upwards north to the seven, dollars $800 mark? At that point, why not get an iPad Air, iPad mini with some sauce and a lot of storage and so forth? You see how it works? It's easily to find where you land. If you are complaining about what this offers and the things that I'm kind of mentioning, which are the gripes in the tech space, you level up. <laughs> it's so simple. So the Magic Keyboard Folio, it's nice, it's dope, and I'm jealous. Reason being, I have a Magic Keyboard right here for my iPad Pro. What's missing? Function keys. We complained about that when this came out, and Apple decided to give it to the basic iPad 10 
exclusively, at least for now, and a $300 keyboard for a basic iPad. Oh, Tim Apple, what you doing, player? <laughs> so I kind of briefly talked about the lack of Apple Pencil 2 support. I kind of get why it's not on here. And with the Apple Pencil 1 support, there's the meme and the drama about the dongle and having to plug it in that way and so forth. Honestly, I feel like the original way that you plugged in the Apple Pencil 1, which was like at the bottom of the iPad, was stupid. Uh, I love what Nakaya showed was the idea that you can charge your Apple Pencil at the bottom of the current you know, iPhones that still have lightning next year going to USB-C. So, I, I, I mean, hey, if you want to use an Apple Pencil 1, you deal with what you got to deal with. Is the dongle fair? I don't know. I understand why it's there because outside of that, how else will you charge it? Because the Apple Pencil 1 design is terrible with a male lightning connection on it. So, get in where you fit in. You want Apple Pencil 2 support? Get an iPad that can support Apple Pencil 2. I think we're starting to get to the point in the tech space where we're making unrealistic requests because this is a basic iPad and it's gonna keep basic features. Although Apple gave it a very non-basic folio keyboard. <laughs> Let's talk about the 449 price point for 64 gigabytes. Tim Apple, player, really? Now, I'll tell you why 64 gigabytes on this iPad that I grabbed could be ideal. Because I'm thinking about giving this 10th gen base iPad just a basic function. Controlling the smart home. And there's other situations where people use iPads and they don't need a ton of storage because they're just more functional for like POS, point of sale, for those who don't know, like in businesses. If you go into the Apple store, they're all using iPad minis. And I'm pretty sure they're all 64 gigabyte models. So when you kind of see it for that perspective, you kind of understand, okay, there's ways that the iPad is being used in the real world that does not require more than 64 gigabytes. But for the everyday user who wants to use this as a specific device and you need more storage, you got to pay for that because it jumps from 64 all the way up to a 256 gigabyte version and then the price point gets hairy to the point to where I think you're knocking on like you know either iPad mini if you don't want to shrink in size iPad Air fourth gen or fifth gen I love the iPad Air we're going to get more into that from a comparison perspective another conflict of interest with this device is okay I own a magic keyboard I don't want to have to go spend another three hundred dollars on a keyboard well there is no <laughs> Magic keyboard support. It doesn't even line up magnetically. So. Nope. You know, wait, let me try. It would be technically this way. Nope. Yeah, it, 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 it's not going to work. Tim. <laughs> and then the last and final thing we're hearing a lot of controversy about with this 10th gen iPad is it doesn't have a laminated display. It has the display that's similar to the one that is actually replacing. Oh, wow. So you mean I'm replacing the 9th gen iPad. I'm getting a new redesign, a new, you know, camera placement, a new camera on the rear, a new look. And I'm keeping the same display technology. I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do y'all want? <laughs> if you want, you know, laminated retina display goodness buy that iPad. I think y'all want a lot for nothing. Now, I'm not doing this to justify anything that Apple's doing with their price point and so forth uh. with this device because it's, it's, it's a weird area, but I think that once they get rid of whatever remaining stock of the ninth gen iPad, then you just have this one. And it kind of will make a little more sense then. Oh, you know what? Before setting it up, this is my iPad Air folio. Let me see if this works with this. This is a- Nope. Not the new one. Oh, it does not work with that. Wow. Okay. So you have a older iPad Air folio. This iPad will not work with that either. You have to get the folio case specifically for this one. And I think it has something to do with the camera being here and the magnet placement being shifted, which makes sense. So right here, we have an iPad Air fourth generation. 
And then we have this new. <laughs> it looks identical. And honestly, from a perspective of some of you guys out there who are, what is it, self-conscious about having your device look dated because the ninth gen iPad looks so dated. That's why I'm excited about this 10th gen getting a redesign because it brings it up to date to the point to where, hey, this person has an Air and this person has a regular iPad, yet you cannot tell the difference. They are not alienated and they are not given the peasant tag <laughs> like my boy Floss would give them. So they can kind of blend in. This is the iPad Air fifth generation right here. And as you still can see, Apple has made it a point to discern between the two. The Air has iPad Air on the back, clear as day with those triple magnets down low. Same thing on the fourth gen. So the fourth gen has the exact same hookup as the fifth gen. And the fifth gen iPad Air is discerned from the fourth gen by saying iPad Air back there. Apple Tim, woo, y'all some sneaky little ooh oohs. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Let me try. This is the uh, fifth gen folio case. Nope. Nope, doesn't work. Okay, so no folio case, no keyboard case of previous iPads or other model iPads will work with this 10th gen. Meaning, if you want accessories, you have to buy the accessories specified specifically for this model. Let me set it up really quick. All right, so I'm back and let's talk about what you get in the box real quick because it's not much, but you do get a nice quality braided cable, USB-C cable with this USB-C charging brick. And that's another great thing about this 10th generation base model cheap iPad is USB-C with the redesign. Gotta love it. I love the new look, the new feel and the vibe of this. It's on brand with all of the other iPad. And with that being said, let me kind of like speak to how I honestly feel from a consumer perspective as to where this iPad actually falls and maybe some purchasing decisions to be made. Give you guys a little bit of guidance on that. So I will be using this iPad strictly for like smart home devices and things. So everything from security cameras, doorbell, there's just so many different things. Cause I'm trying to get into a smart home segment that I'm gonna be doing where I'm gonna share like smart home tech that I actually use and not just smart home tech for the heck of it, but like stuff that's practical and that could be possibly of value to you. That's why I said the 64 gigabytes on an iPad like this, and the only reason going for this bigger one over the iPad mini, some of you guys might be saying, why not get the mini, a smaller, more compact, more smart home ideal, but if I'm monitoring multiple cameras, the bigger display is gonna serve me better. And I don't need laminated display, I just need a good display and that's what Apple makes. Regardless if it's laminated or not, it's going to be a good display with Apple. So this LED panel that Apple has given us is that LED panel that we know and love from years of the past. Yes, the laminated one is technologically better, but this one is just fine. Like, for real? Okay, from a purchasing perspective, if I'm someone, I'm out there, or if I'm you and I'm trying to make a decision, if you're looking at this iPad, what are the real reasons? Are you looking at it because it's cheaper or the cheapest iPad? Are you looking at it because it's going to have a lower role in your technology lineup? Are you considering it because of the new redesign and you like the fact that you can get a base model or a you know beginning iPad at a beginner's price point and have it look on brand with the other iPads. Now, at $449 for the entry level 64 gigabytes, which is rough, man. I don't know. I know the tech, you know, person in me wants to see 128 and above, but the realist understands that they are, you know, like I said, business purposes or like I'm using smart home purposes where you don't need more than 64 gigabytes. Not justifying, just Clarifying. Okay, so if I take this M1 iPad Air, which is the latest generation, and then I take this iPad mini, and we place them all together, and we put them head to head from a consumer perspective, what do we get? All of these devices are very similarly positioned. Now we can also talk about the iPad Air generation four, which is the one right before the M1, which is running on a a chip as well. For the sake of this, let's just put it in perspective from what's offered on Apple's 
Com website. These two right here both have the 10.9 inch display. The only difference between these two is one is the laminated liquid retina and the other is the non-laminated liquid retina, which means there's just a small gap in between the uh, glass panel and the actual uh, LCD that you're touching. Now, when it comes to the internal chips, we got the M1, we got the A14 Bionic chip, and then we have the A15 Bionic chip. And I think if we go with the iPad Air Generation 4, we actually get the exact same A14 Bionic chip as this new base model iPad. Now, all of these devices right here have a 12 megapixel wide camera on them. Probably the same one. All of these have USB-C, all of these have 5G, all of these have Touch ID, all of these have Apple Pencil support. If you're gonna use an Apple Pencil, and you can afford to position yourself for the better technology, the Apple Pencil 2 is the way to go. And that right there will narrow down your decision. You will get an iPad that can take an Apple Pencil 2. Now, the interesting thing is, for what? Almost 50 bucks more, you could get an iPad mini with the 64 gigabytes, but this might not be your display size preference. Then you need to move into the iPad Air. You know, you gotta consider the sizing that you want. If you want a larger size panel, you know, LCD panel or whatever, then you're forced either to jump here and stay basic or to move here into the iPad Air, which to me personally is like the ideal iPad like that middle of the road, like the perfect combination, the in between the pro and the not so basic, but like just that nice sweet spot iPad. It's like super well designed, super well performed. It's just a great device. I need to do an updated uh, review on this one. I mean, with this basic one, you're even getting Bluetooth technology 5.2 and these other two only have Bluetooth 5.0. Does that matter? No. Just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> so essentially, as you can see, the iPad lineup is very hard to decipher. Like the biggest difference out of these right here is the chip. You got an M1 chip. So if you wanna do M1 type stuff, you wanna do video editing of high resolution, multi, you know, streams of 4K, blah, 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 and have a smoother experience than the M1 iPad Air or iPad Pro. M2, whatever, is ideal for you and you shouldn't even be looking this way. But it's clearly, clearly deciphered for you. Think about it. Pro iPad creators or M1 iPad users, why are you even talking about or looking at the base model iPad? It's not for you. Same goes with the iPad mini. If you want a bigger display, this is not for you. Here's the true and simple way to look at the iPad lineup. Yes, it's confusing, but it makes more sense when you look at it from the broad perspective. I'll admit this new iPad, the only reason it's confusing is because the ninth generation iPad is still being sold until I'm pretty sure the inventory is depleted. But if you remove that and you just look at everything as is, it falls in line. The people who just want the cheapest, non-expensive, iPad, they're gonna buy this and they're just gonna deal with whatever shortcomings this gives them because that's where their budget puts them. If your budget puts you here, you're not buying a $300 folio keyboard. You're probably not even gonna get the Apple Pencil with the dongle. You're just gonna get this and be happy with what you can afford. Now, if you have more money to spend and you're looking at the 256 gigabyte model of this device, which puts you in a different price bracket of $600, dollars 256 gigabytes of storage you're on this device you pay 600 bucks some people are gonna be like oh why would you spend that it's because you wanted a basic ipad because that's where your budget was but you needed storage that puts you at 600 dollars some people are gonna be like oh no you you get for 600 dollars you can get the ipad air at 64 gigabytes get out of here cut it out cut it out if you want to spend 600 dollars so you can have more storage and have an iPad and that's where your budget puts you, why would you pay 600 and only have 64 gigabytes if you needed 256? Because 256 gigabytes on the iPad Air is gonna cost you $749. And if you can't afford the $749, here is where you land. Or you can go previous gen, iPad Air fourth gen, right here, find it for a heck of a deal, a heck of a price, which 
Actually, I did that when I grabbed this iPad, and I'm pretty sure you can find them in the wild, not on Apple's site, for a great price. Okay, we can argue that. Get the higher storage, get the iPad Air, get a better experience, get Apple Pencil 2 support, which is the Apple Pencil that you definitely want to use. It's a better experience. This setup right here is ideal. So I'm with the people who would tell you, hey, look for a Gen 4 at an extreme discount because you're getting more iPad. The iPad mini is interesting because for 649 bucks, you can get an iPad mini and have 256 gigabytes of space, but you don't get the large display. Now you get a faster processing chip, the A15 inside of here, but it's the mini. If you're looking for a larger display, that's not where you're gonna land. See how it goes? It's just process of elimination to find where you land. I need this, I need this, I need that. Okay, this is where I am. And you gotta consider your budget. The iPad Pro, that's a whole nother hemisphere, a whole nother price point, a whole different animal. So if you are a pro iPad user, why are you even on this video screwing up your face Oh, that iPad's terrible. Like, it's not for you. What, what, what does your opinion matter if it's not for you? <laughs> Boy, I tell you, the tech space is hilarious, non-realistic. So if by now you can't decide which iPad you need, I can't help you. And neither can any other tech creator. You should know. Process of elimination. What size display do you want? How much storage do you need? Where does your budget land? Those are the deciding factors. And also if you need more processing power or not. Simple as that. Oh, and uh, on a side note, let me just add this. I think the new redesigned iPad 10 is dope. I think is well put together for what it is. I think it does live up to its value point to a degree. It's arguable, but I think it does. I think it was a tough iPad to position for Apple, but I think they did well considering their lineup because it's simple, process of elimination. Now hit that subscribe button and hit the bell right next to that subscribe button so you don't miss my proper review on this device after using it for the intention that I plan to and also just using it as an iPad and letting you guys know how I feel about it and any other brutally honest, realistic consumer perspective tech reviews that I release.